entity would take out a hedge to protect against fluctuations in its financial position and performance. The entity's aim is typically to be in a net unchanged position in relation to a specific transaction or activity. For this objective to be achieved, the hedge must be effective. Hedge effectiveness is a measure of how well a derivative instrument has performed as part of a hedging strategy. In other words, the movement in the hedging instrument must be opposite to the movement in the hedged item. This interaction between a hedge instrument and a hedged item is referred to as a hedging relationship. These terms can be difficult to understand, so let's use an everyday example to put it into perspective. Consider John, who is conducting research in Antarctica. The outside temperatures fluctuate drastically, but John needs to maintain the normal human body temperature in order to function. John cannot control the weather, but he cannot let his body temperatures fluctuate either. So he uses a thermal regulating coat that keeps him warm when he goes outside to conduct his research. In this example, the weather represents the hedged item. It can fluctuate and can have devastating effects. In order to protect against these fluctuations, John uses his thermal regulating coat, which represents the hedging instrument. This counters the fluctuations in the weather so when the temperature drops, the thermal coat would trap more of John's body heat and keep him warm, maintaining his normal body temperature. The effectiveness of a hedging relationship affects where gains or losses on hedges and hedged items are recognised. As a general rule, the effective portion of a hedging relationship is recognised in other comprehensive income. On the other hand, Gains or losses on ineffective hedging relationships are recognised directly in profit or loss. Where a hedge relationship is only partially effective, gains or losses are recognised in other comprehensive income only to the extent that the hedge is effective, with the remainder being recognised in profit or loss. It is important to note that this is only a general rule and that there are exceptions to where gains or losses are recognised depending on factors like the type of hedge and the characteristics of the hedged item. So why is this important? Companies tend to want to present the most favourable profit or loss position. Without strict rules about where gains or losses on hedged items and their hedges are to be recognised, Companies may simply elect to recognise gains on hedges in profit or loss, but high losses on hedges in other comprehensive income. To prevent this, the accounting standards contain a strict set of rules that specify where gains or losses are recognised. IFRS 9 requires that hedge effectiveness be assessed at the inception of a hedge relationship and on an ongoing basis throughout the hedge relationship. There are three characteristics that must be present in a hedge relationship for it to be considered effective, both at the inception and on an ongoing basis, for accounting purposes. Firstly, an economic relationship must exist between the hedge and the hedged item. An economic relationship exists if the same risk causes the hedged item and the hedging instrument to move in opposite directions. In John's example, when the outside temperatures decreased, his thermal regulating coat would trap more heat. Secondly, the effect of credit risk cannot dominate the fair value changes that result from the economic relationship. The significance of credit risk as a component of determining the fair value of the hedge involves judgment. Credit risk may arise from the counterparty or the entity's own credit risk. And lastly, the hedge ratio for accounting must be the same as that used for the actual risk management purposes. The hedge ratio is defined as the relationship between the quantity of the hedging instrument and the quantity of hedged item in terms of their relative weighting. For example, if a loan of $100,000 is hedged with a forward exchange contract for the same amount, the hedge ratio for this relationship would be one to one. This ratio 
would then be compared to the ratio used for risk management purposes to determine if this characteristic is present in the hedge relationship. To recap, there are three characteristics that must be present in a hedge relationship for it to be considered effective, both at inception and on an ongoing basis. IFRS 9 requires that hedge relationships be demonstrably effective to recognise gains or losses on hedges and hedged items in other comprehensive income.